Well, this is going to be a fun day. What I've got is a 435 Bobcat excavator and lost all hydraulic functions, even the blade. And why I say even the blade is because, you know, on these older machines, the blade is not pilot controlled. It's actually cable operated. So when you pull the handle, you're moving a spool in the control valve. And you, if you had any hydraulic pressure from your pump, that blade should move on these older machines. And that kind of rules out an electrical issue, like if it was your armrest or something like that, because even with the armrest up, you should still be able to work the blade. Um, so what I believe has happened is the coupler between the engine and the pump has stripped out. Um, worst case scenario, we sheared the shaft on the pump. I've seen that before too. But let's take a look at what this little coupler is. This side is what's going to be on the pump. This side's going to be on the engine. It's like a um, nylon reinforced plastic. And, you know, this metal coupler slides into the plastic coupler. And this is the weak point. This is the shear point that something's got to give at some point. But what happens is these do wear out and they actually strip inside. So now this is just spinning inside the coupler is what I assume. Now there is a lock nut or a lock bolt on the end of that because these kind of a C it's cut out here and that's how when we put it on the pump shaft we clamp it down. I have seen these slide onto the pump shaft completely out of the coupler and barely damage any of the teeth out of there and what we can do is just slide this gear back in deeper, lock it down with some Loctite and uh, get the machine up and going. And sometimes this gear is I don't know if you can see in here, see there's still some teeth left on here, depending on where we set this. Um, so if this stripped out, I might still have some good teeth in there. And why that's important is because this is in a terrible location down the hill on the side of a mountain. And it's just not easy for me to get down to it. So if I can back the bolts out of the pump, back the pump out a little bit and adjust this, I might have enough teeth left in here where I can start this machine up and get it to a better location or a more safe location because I've got a counterweight and stuff to pull out, but I can't pull out my crane because I'm all up under power lines and everything here. So anyways, let's get down here and start tearing this thing apart. So what I'm working on now is I'm just trying to get my muffler out of the way so I can get down to the pump itself. And um, once I get this muffler out, I'm gonna try to back out the, there's two mounting bolts on the muffler. And I'm gonna try to, or on the uh, pump, I'm sorry, I'm gonna try to slide those mounting bolts out, push the pump out a little bit, see if I can get any T, see what the condition of our coupler is, see if I can get this thing moving again. Mufflers out, 18 millimeter for the pump bolts. Get yourself one of these offset wrenches, moon wrench, whatever you want to call it. Um, gosh, it makes life easy on these pumps. Now the bolt, the way the indentation is in the pump, you can't get um, you can't get a socket on these bolts, so you have to do it with a wrench. So I've got the two mounting bolts out of the pump and I guess to get that lower uh, bolt out I had to pull this tube line um, off the pump to kind of get it out of my way so the wrench could get there. So really all I've done so far was pull the exhaust, pull that one tube line and those two bolts. And now what I can do <clears throat> is that's all that holds the pump to the bell housing of the motor. So now what I want to do is I'm going to put my pry bar in there and try to back this pump off and see what kind of damage we've got on that uh, on that coupler. This is much easier like on a 337 um, or a 341 excavator than the 435s, especially if this was a fast track. Oh, it'd be miserable. Okay. So I may not have enough room on my hoses on this machine 
to get it out all the way out as far as I want. All right, so the coupler, I can see is sliding on the shaft. I don't know if I can get you to see that. Not sure how well you can see in there, but see that pump shaft right there in the center? It looks like it is slid, it's sliding out of that center metal coupler that I told you about. That metal coupler should be further down, so when I try to back this pump off, it's just sliding out of the coupler. Right now, just looking up in there, I still can't tell the extent of the damage just yet, but uh, let's keep trying to pull that out and see what we find. So you can see I've got the whole pump slid out. That coupler should be bolted to that end of that shaft, but it's not, it's still up in the plastic coupler on the uh, bell housing side. So now I gotta see if I can get it out of there just to see what, like I said, I just kinda wanna see what's going on here as far as what happened. And there's the center coupler. You know, the teeth on it still look good, a little worn, but yeah, there's like no teeth left on our uh, inside coupler. Let's see if we can get a shot of that. Yeah, so see the center of that coupler where that gear was riding? There is still some teeth in the very end of it, and I think. I don't know if I'm going to try to get this running or if I'm going to fix it right here. I don't know yet because I've got to pull this counterweight off. This whole bell housing has the rear engine mounts attached to it and this whole bell housing has to come off. So we have to lift the engine up, pull this whole bell housing off in order to uh, get this center plate bolted in there. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get some of this taken apart and I'll bring you back with me as soon as uh, I get to a more interesting point, I guess. So we're definitely making progress. You can see I got this um, counterweight was able just to swing out of my way. Uh, pulled the starter off and that allowed me to <clears throat> pull this bell housing off that's bolted to the engine plate right here. There's four bolts, two on this side, two on the other side of the engine. The one on the bottom far side of the engine is probably the hardest part of the whole job to get to. And now I was trying to do everything I could to avoid pulling the pump off because it's a real pain to get the pump out of this machine. It's so tight down in here and getting all the hoses off, losing all our fluid. But on the 435, I cannot get the bell housing off with the pump in place. Uh, 337, 331, I can pull the bell housing out with the pump in place with all the hoses still attached to it. Again, the only line I've removed was one tube line just so I could get the bolt out. But now I was able to lift my engine up. You see, I've just found a stick that I've got pried underneath the engine there because to get the bell housing off, the four bolts plus the engine, two engine mounts on um, either side of it. And then one engine mount over here, bolt I pulled out. And that allowed me to lift this engine up high enough uh, wedge a stick under there because I didn't have any two befores or anything on the truck But it's just holding the engine up to a point where now I've got enough space between the bell housing and the flywheel You can see my couplers right in there and I'm working on and I'm able to get my Little flex head ratchet here Let's see. Yeah on the bolt that's holding the uh, coupler in now I'm turning the engine over. I got to put my pry bar on the uh, flywheel. Now I can hold my flywheel in place with my pry bar. Oh, I know it's hard to see, but. Oh my gosh. Of course, that's not gonna wanna come out very easy. I've got a couple of them out already. What I wanna do is, well, try to get it out without stripping the damn bolt out. But it's 
hard when you're coming in at an angle like this. Ugh. Good Lord. So there's five total bolts that uh, I've got to get out. This is my third one. So, uh, yeah, making progress. There's nothing fun about these jobs, especially in the field. It's just, you know, one bolt at a time. It sucks, but we just take our time and uh, we'll eventually get there. I think probably, uh, start to finish this job is going to take me I'm already two hours into it so probably four to five hours total so finally getting my uh last bolt out almost uh almost couldn't get it out i was hitting it with the chisel i uh, kind of spun off the allen head a little bit and i couldn't get my allen head socket back in there so uh i shocked it a few times with a hammer and chisel and uh was able to get a torx bit into that bolt so here is our Now, if I can get my wrench and everything out at the same time. All right, here's our old coupler. And here's my bolt. So I had to get a Torx bit in there. Yeah, it's pretty wedged in there now. Not much left in there i i am so lucky that bolt came out man that would have uh that would have been a mess so now i can install my new coupler plate new bolts always get new bolts when you get when you install one of these because uh you're gonna need it I'll put a little blue Loctite on these as I put it in. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Now that I got the old one out, I can put that in and I can get the bell housing and everything put together and it's just all downhill from now. Well, everything is going back quite nicely. Now, don't let me fool you. This has fought me a lot. It's, I mean, it's just nuts and bolts in the end, but, um, Everything seemed to fight me. It's just hard to get to the bolts and get, you know, the coupler in. But basically what I want you to see is that uh, now that I got the main pup coupler on the pump, this gap right here is crucial that you have the right spacing. And that's so that the uh, coupler fits right in that plastic coupler uh, perfectly. If, if, you do, if you don't align it on the shaft with the right measurement, either gonna to be too far in or not far enough in and more likely you're gonna strip that coupler sooner. So you want it dead center. So I'm not gonna tell you what the spec is on this machine because they're all different. So you have to refer to your service manual and your serial number and find out what that actual measurement is. So now that I do have it all put together, locked down, it's ready to slide the pump in and button it up. So we got to get those splines lined up perfectly. Sometimes it just goes in like it just did. Sometimes it doesn't. All right. 
see if I can get some bolts started. Well, I just got done cleaning up. I'm about to start the machine up and make sure everything works. That's uh, I'm a little over four hours in this whole process. I got most of my tools cleaned up, but um, just putting away the last couple and then we're gonna fire it up. Contact. Well, I can hear the hydraulics running, so I know it's working. Oh, yeah. Hopefully that video helped on replacing the hydraulic coupler, the drive coupler for the main pump on the excavators. It's a lot harder on the zero swing uh, machines like the 435, but um, the 337s, you know, pretty much all of those and the 341s. I guess what I wanted to show you is that it is possible not to remove the pump. If you look at a service manual or any other YouTube channel, they're gonna show just removing everything. And that pump is, you're gonna lose all your fluid, it's just gonna cost you a lot more, make a lot bigger mess, and take a lot more time. Yeah, I did have a bit of a fight with that pump in my way, but we were able to get it. That's, it's very rare that I pull a pump out for a drive coupler, so any questions on that, let me know. Thanks again for watching.